how you handle powdery mildew in the grill. Don't let it grab you by the bud, Scotty. You got it? Don't let it grab you, okay? Ah, <laughs> uh, when did you write that one down, huh? Oh, grab you by the buds. <laughs> I yes, love guys, it, powdery man. mildew is out there. Let's talk about best practices, handling it, keeping it out. There's all kinds of different tech out there now. Newer tech with UV lights, uh, ozone filtration, plenty of sprays, different ways to handle it in flower versus veg. Uh, it's been a minute, man. And I don't know why I'm kind of excited to talk about it, probably because I don't have it and haven't had it in a long effing time. This is something that, yeah, this is just whether you're doing bug IPM or powdery mildew IPM or, you know, molds, it is important just to have a lot of these things in place, at least to have a system. Yeah. 100%, especially if you know it's something that you've dealt with or with the genetics you're working with sometimes can come on more than not. So, yeah, let's get into it, man. Let's hop into some powdery mill. Say what's up. Yeah, hello. Can we request? Let's do it all like Elon Musk this time, man. Elon Musk. Elon Musk this time. Let's do at least five second pauses. <laughs> Every. <laughs> Everybody gets a five second pause. They're I, okay. I like you call him Eon Musk. Eon. It takes him an eon to answer a damn question. Not bad, man. <laughs> Remember Eon Flux? Are you too young? For oh, that, no, 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 no. But part of the reason I am who I am is because of Eon Flux. Yeah, that was cool. That's man. that leaves an impression on a young man. Oh, that was so cool back. What was that called? Well, Liquid TV. Liquid right? television. I just want to give a, 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 a quick intro as far as powdery mildew is actually a fungi. The fungi like fungi that has, you know, hyphae that go down into the leaf surface, just like fungi, you know, on, on other parts or in, yes. Have we decided it's fungi and not fungi? I was saying, I, I was running like the, 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 the secret, it was something about fungi last night. It was a hidden kingdom of fungi or something. And right in the beginning, he just declares that he's going to call it fungi. Yeah. I know some people say fungi, but I'm going to say fungi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say fungi. Hey. You're going with fungi? I'm going to go with fungi, man. But there's so many of them. And just what you were saying, they have to anchor into that plant or on into that plant. Yeah. And uh, Grambo, come on. What do they do? How do they anchor? What's well, it called? It's the process of invagination, of course. <laughs> the sad thing is everybody knows what that means, man. It's taking the, it's squeezing itself into that little pore and it's setting its anchor in there. It's setting its hooks in there. Grambo, it's show this PM there, image Rambo. here. Uh, that I have in what is PM and it's two strains that specifically screw with hemp and cannabis. Let's see if I can do this. Um, Golo Vinimyces ambrosiae and Podosophiria macularis. Okay. Those are the two wow. prominent ones. Just to let you know what's messing with your squash and what's messing with your other vegetables and what's on the leaves of the oak tree. It's all different. It's not all the same that goes with, with cannabis. So um, yeah. Did you get that image up when you watch the stream? Here? I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Ooh. That's bad, man. Oh man, look at all those tracks. <laughs> ah, come on. Who's never done that, man? Well, I this did. Must be trikes. Eat. Just smoke it, all right. I've never, I've never done that. No. no, you never smoked moldy weed, just lying to yourself, telling you it's trikes. Well, I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I didn't. I'm sure I didn't know, but looking back, I'm no, sure I, looked, I did. When I first started, I was like, it's white, man. Look how white it is. <laughs> That's know? why like, we call it the white. Yeah, man. it's like trike. I mean, I was young, all right? Might even been on some ragweed. It's the crypto. Uh, What's up? Be, be careful. The first image here is very plant specific. But in this article, Scotty found um, out of medicinalgenomics.com. They have a lot of good info over there, and they do a lot of testing. They're very scientific. And this one's about his powdery mildew um, systemic. Um, yeah. And argument. Just to clarify, systemic what? means that it gets in the vascular system of the plant. And it doesn't matter when you take a clone, it doesn't matter if you take a clone from someplace with powdery mildew or without it. Mm -hmm. It is in the system, the vascular system of the plant, yes. and you will have it. When you hear systematic, think entire system. Whoa. Huh. I like that, man. That's how I think of it. No, nah, that's cool. That's got the end. What you're saying out of the article here, it says a powdery mildew detection can detect powdery mildew DNA from cannabis leaves that show no visual signs. That suggests we're detecting DNA from a mycelium network, which is pretty awesome, actually, that the pathogen creates prior to sporulation. 
So this early detection can be useful to growers who can remove and quarantine infected plants. So to me, that almost sounds systemic. Why does that not systemic? It's hey, close. That was it, it, it's close. That's why there's an argument about it. Grandpa, will you say sporulation? Sporulation. I like it, man. <laughs> Sporulate. <laughs> uh, but that's what it is. These spores are so hard to see when they're small that you it just looks like it comes out of nowhere. And when it comes out of nowhere, you're like, hey, wait a minute. Maybe that came from, you know, the inside internally. But that's not what scientists have discovered. Yeah. Yeah, and then it goes on to talk about um, you can actually, and this isn't horrible if you click on uh, getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but this company, they do testing for all kinds of stuff. Um, oh, there's this test kit. It's like a, their cheapest one's like a hundred and what is it, $142. And you literally, you do it at home. You take these little four millimeter leaf uh, samples that you put in a vial of preloaded liquid and you like shake it in here. And then you look for the color. It's like a, a pregnancy test, huh. almost. Fascinating. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty. They that's pretty dope. I mean, too for uh, plant sex, uh, a whole bunch of different ones. Plant sex control. Yeah. Plant I, sex control. It's, it's getting more like affordable. Shit. This stuff used to be only for people that like could get to the lab. Like some of this at home stuff, or the ability to send in leaf tissue samples to determine sex, diseases, powdered mildew. It's freaking handy, depending on how you have your grow set up. Uh, but creepy stuff, dude. Powdery mildew is the most creepiest for me out of almost everything out there because, like, you think you got it all under control and it's gone. And like we just said, it, then it just presents itself and it comes back out at the worst at the yeah. time, like three or four weeks in the bloom. Yes. Yeah, it's a nightmare. And this is what it says. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we collected four samples from visually clean leaves off a plant that had visual PM everywhere else on the, or elsewhere on the plant. Of those four samples, three tested positive. Damn, it says this does not prove the theory that PM can travel through the plant's vascular system. It could be the other plant, the other parts of the plant were infected by a separate event. But that is crazy, man. You know, that it just spreads like that without real visual warning. Yeah, I went to your, your next article here that says you know, they're presenting arguments. It's not systemic. But again, in my mind, I'm just going on the front of Systemic or not, it's a huge issue since it can travel around through the plant. Um, this is uh, out of uh, some LinkedIn dude, Mark Emelman. Um, but it features a bunch hey. of different quotes in here from people in the industry. And Brandon Rust, who's the cultivation director of Majestic Craft Cannabis and founder of Bokashi Earthworks, brings up another reason people believe powdery mildew is systemic. Brandon explains, and this is kind of important, when conditions are correct for powdery mildew, it can flourish, especially in un healthy plants. Most infected plants I see are truly healthy and not expressing the plant's genetic potential. Weak plants already fighting a great battle for their health do not have the energy necessary to resist further infection, leading for some to believe the underlying case of powdery mildew is systemic. So that was what we do for a lot of other things, make the point of healthy plants, how much strong, healthy plants can take care of, not fully, it doesn't mean they can't get anything, but it's just like humans. It's just like the analogy of are you stressed? Your immune system's weak. You're low on vitamin D. You eat like crap. You're going to get sick easy. So I, I really like to remind people of hey, one of the best ways to prevent pests and diseases is make sure you have a really healthy grow. Grow strong plants, man. Is this my recharge commercial now? Have <laughs> you ever seen those elk that jump up in the air when they see predators instead of running? They start jumping vertically to say like, you don't want this, bro. This, ah. this ain't an easy meal. Ah. And the predators recognize that and they go, respect, I'm going to go somewhere else. And so you want your prance just like, you don't want this, sucker? Uh, I would think he's pretending he's rabid. You know? <laughs> the hell gets obviously messed up, man. You don't want to eat that thing. <laughs> Yo, man, he crazy. Yeah, whatever he's got, probably <laughs> systemic, you know? Uh, entire system. Well, you, you should preach that, Scotty, before we get into IPM and how to handle. We have many different ways to try and deal with powdered mildew. Recharge. Creates healthy plants, man. It's a huge help. That would be what I would say in my grow. Outside of your basic nutrition, what else am I giving, you know, as a supplement to create health? And that's just in general. Yeah, just in general. Strong. If you grow strong, healthy plants, uh, you know, nature attacks the weak. It's an opportunist. An opportunist. They end up going somewhere else. So that's the idea. And recharge makes it easy. Real growers makes it easy, man. Oh, I like that game changer, Grambo. <laughs> yeah, I got tricks. Wow. 
Uh, anyway, realgrowers.com. Check it out. If you watch, you know. Yes, most definitely. For sure. Easy with any any additivity system. Let me take it to, let's talk about how we handle this. Um, IPM. Don't get it. That's how you handle it. I mean, it, it, cultural practices. <laughs> That's caring. dude's IPM. Dude's IPM is don't get it. I want to hear his his, uh, <laughs> his sex like talk with his kids. Yeah, right? STDs. Don't, don't get, get them. them. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the night. <laughs> yes. Um. Uh, we just mentioned how easy powdered mildew can be present within a plant, but you don't see it. So cultural practices such as clone sharing. You visited somebody's grow. Now that I'm growing, um, and I just went to my buddy's grow who always has thrips yesterday, I make a point to make sure I'm not going from his grow to my grow. Uh, you know, and he's just he just deals with thrips. I don't know why he, he can't get rid of them. They're, they're not the worst pest to have, and he's always knocking them down. So we have a successful harvest and whatnot. Jeez. But changing clothes, shoes. Hair. Sometimes, if I'm if I don't have time to hop in a shower, I'm moving quick. A uh, great tool to have by your grow room door is an air compressor. Just blast! I'll blast my arms, blast my shirt quick. I know it's not 100 guarantee. Hit my hair, but <laughs> hey, blow yourself off before going in your grow, man. It's yeah. an easy thing to do. A lot of commercial facilities install air curtains. I found this was very fascinating. Air curtains and those blow different temperature air shafts. So they stay like there's a differential and it creates a shaft of air that cleans you. And then you, you'll wash through several layers of air curtains. It's dude's Theo Vaughn air curtain. I like it, man. But it's a big deal. I used to have a, yeah, it's paid now. I have a paid path, but I used to have to walk through grass to get to my grow from my house to my grow. So you're wearing jeans, you're wearing socks, shoes. It ain't hard to think, you know, that bugs are going to, a bug could hop on there and you could bring it into your grow. And that's all it takes because it's a perfect environment for growing in there. Yep. Uh, two other ways PM gets in before we get to the IPM and how you're going to handle it. Uh, spores in the air. Such a pain in the ass. Can't see it. Can't smell it. Don't, you know, you have no clue. Spores in the air, they can travel super easy, long distances. So we'll talk about filtering your air intake, inline UV filters as well. What um, about? And you should always. What's up? Quarantine, man. We always say it, but what about quarantine? <laughs> if you're bringing clones in from somebody else's grow and you look, there ain't really any excuse anymore. If you're actively doing that, you can get what? A two by four system, a two by two system. Shout out to Grow Guru that had the smallest tent I had ever seen. Wasn't it sure. like two foot tall or something? Yeah, I was he was like, Yeah, I get a grow tent. He brought it in. I was like, Are you sure, man? <laughs> but that could be what he'd use to quarantine clones. He, he could have quarantined 20 clones in there, 40 clones. Mm. It was cheap for sure. Uh shout out to AC Infinity. I think a two by four. With coupon code dude grows is like 130 bucks uh for a brand new two by four tent to have set up like i was saying earlier uh pm takes seven to ten days after an infection after the hyphae and the mycelium network starts working within the leaves you're not going to see nothing for seven to ten days before you're able to visually identify any little type and when pm first starts coming on it can be rather subtle if you don't have a trained eye visually you got to scout hard yeah and always Go look in in the back corner of your room. Go look where the least amount, if you have that space of airflow is, um, and where also temperature fluctuations can happen. We'll get into that in just a second. I wanted to also mention soil before ways PM gets in. It can overwinter. That's scary, man. Don't reuse. If you had PM in your garden, you can't be reusing that media. Um, spores could be active in that media. Overwinter could go outside and still stay alive. Oh, yeah. So you want to make sure you get rid of all your media and have one hell of a cleaning in between grows if you have PM. Yep. You don't want to sporulate in the spring, man. Sporulation. It's the proper word. Sporulate. Sporulation. It's a good word to say, though, isn't it, man? I'm so going to use that, dude. Next time, like, you know, me and the missus, just to throw her off. Like, yeah. Oh, Spoiling? <laughs> sporulate, man. Sporulate. No, it just means the spores are... You relate to spores and stuff, man. Well, I'm looking for another like. I mean, <laughs> English is cool, man. <laughs> Rambo, you you sound off mic. FYI. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, oh, I I just sneezed and I forgot to turn my mic back on. All right, man. You just have it all over the place, man. <laughs> oh, you did it! He did it. <laughs> code words? No. 
Oh, that's like when the kids are around. Uh, hey, me and mom are going to go do some Wim Hof breathing technique. No. <laughs> My brother Trip did have a code word and he had to use it a couple times. You remember he had beeper codes back in the day? <laughs> yeah, my brother Tripp had one and it was 911. And 911 meant just leave the house now. The cops are probably coming. <laughs> and I had to say that just once. <laughs> we just have that once. too. I, me and my friends, if you ever get the letter Z texted to you, if you just get the letter Z in a text message, that's panic mode. So, so. Oh, God, man. Oh, God. Uh, Thank God for Colorado. Let's <laughs> change the subject. <laughs> One of the easiest things that uh, we can all try and control as growers for powder mildew is temperature and humidity. Um, it likes microclimates or swings in temperature and humidity, especially humidity. What did you learn, Scotty? No, no, I'm giving you the yeah. That's the biggest thing, man, is swings. Not even, you know, a little bit of higher temperature humidity, but man, those swings, especially nighttime, you turn that uh, your lights off and all of a sudden your humidity swings a bunch. Goes from low to high, high to low. Yeah, sporulation. So that's in one sentence. It's I'm here up this article. It's mold likes high temperatures, about 70 degrees, which isn't that high. I've seen it work easy at all temperatures that we like to have our grow rooms and grow tents at. High humidity, darkness, and stagnant air, all of which you don't want in your grow regardless, because if that's in your grow, your buds and shit ain't doing good. But that's also why it pops up in the back of people's grows because they don't have enough airflow for that area, but their main area. You guys should try to run floor fans. It's not always necessary in every situation if you can. Wall fans, I've seen cool ass ceiling fans that push air down from above the lights people have rigged up. Air movement is so key. And then humidity, what do you like? I, I, I quickly throw this out there for nighttime humidity as far as uh, max min, like do you say I want to compare to daytime? I just keep mine steady at 62, I think. So I, I don't think I don't change it at all. I'm I know I, there's a commercial SOP books are getting written finally. And I was listening to some guys talk about them. And one of the SOPs that they're recommending is four degrees. You don't want it to go uh, from your day to nighttime temperatures. You don't want anything more than a four. To, now, that's perfect Wait. world. Is that like, that's not like sure or humidity uh, temperature. OK, I disagree, though, because I run. So right now I'm looking at my pulse meter. My nighttime humidity is at 63.6 right now. Good to go. Daytime, it maybe gets up to 65, 66. So three degree differential temperature right now, those 73 daytime temperatures around 85. It swings like 10 to 12. That's a I, big temperature swing. You're not worried about uh, evaporating your terpenes off, man. What are, you, are, you, are you messing with me? I'm not actually, man. That's the big reason why you keep it cool, man. Your terpenes will volatize off at certain temperatures uh, higher than so the high 70s, I think. At least I'm in start. Week three and a half of a bloom right now. I'll run my temps up to 83 to 84, probably all the way through mid flower for sure. Man, I'm at week I'm three or four of bloom, but I'm probably different because I have uh, trichomes on my butt already. So. Oh, God. Man. Nothing. No, no, I'm just, I have plenty of trikes on my bud. I got mine down in the mid 70s. I'm at 74 uh, in, in flowering and veg because, man, those terpenes, it doesn't take much to think, man. You ever smell weed in a hot car? It's not magic. Those are terpenes volatizing off. You ever have weed that's grown I, uh, in a super hot room that doesn't taste or smell like anything? <laughs> I've had member super hot room, which 83 to 84 with a CO2 of around 1100. Uh, my DPD tell me I'm almost exactly on point with my humidity. I don't know what else to do, but look at the science, Scotty. I, I towards the end, I will pull my temps down. But no, I've, I have not had my terpenes have issues in the low 80s, if you will. All right, man. And I think depending on phase of growth, you're also sacrificing what running LEDs with least surface temperature. If you're not checking that. Um, you know, capitals will be lower in the 70s. <laughs> Look at you guys, you got like a subliminal message. Yeah. Toke, dank, that's right. <laughs> uh, it's funny, man. What are we gonna wear tomorrow, man? I was Call just th me. I was thinking if I wasn't, if I was like, in, it says real growers, toke, toke dank. dank. Oh, I like that. Go move over and do spot, will you? <laughs> well, though, I'm getting, I'm getting more geeked out. You can tell I've been using my pulse meter more. My buddy has a pro just yesterday, I was at his place. I'm like, have you used this shit to check your deal? I or PPF yet? He's like, no, I never tried it. I'm like, here, let me show you. You just hit this button and this button and it does it. And then as well as learning about, you know, sure, 
If you're gonna tell me about your room temperatures, but what's more important is your leaf surface temperature and measuring that shit out to know how high you should run to be looking at BPD and all that if you wanna get into all of it. I hear you're still gonna turn out good bud, but I think for your nice HLG's 70s is a little low, bro. Certain terpenes begin to evaporate at temperatures low as 70 degrees Fahrenheit, while others vaporize at around 100 degrees. So you can lose certain terpenes, man. Let me get the uh, terpene boiling point points and temperature chart out man Ooh. i have to confirm i'm 21 first damn love the internet though do you remember when you have to go to a library to try to learn something oh man like Dewey you decimal system. Oh. <laughs> yeah i could just yell stuff into my phone i was asking we were having fun grambo i asked uh chat gpt mm. to uh give me a bible bible verse in the voice of Snoop Dogg. Hey. And it did great. Hey, Sizzle. Yeah. Uh, of Snoop Dogg. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty legit. Uh, trick question. Snoop Dogg is God. Whoa, man. Whoa. <laughs> hey, did I tell you guys? Thinking, oh, boy. It's just real quick. Yeah. About the South Park. And my wife got us tickets to see oh, uh, uh, the Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon. Scott called me in the middle I, of the night. He's I like, mean, dude, I don't get offended by stuff, man. And I was just like, and then I was like looking around to see if someone was going to like throw their shoe or something, man. And just like, we have a. I don't know, well behaved. So or- crazy that when Scott so- told it to me, I had a hard time believing it. I was like, dude, that's a popular musical. There's no way that's in it. Dude, my mother in law worked it. It's at the Lincoln Center. I was like, this is a classy place. Like, there's a dress code here. There's somebody that rings the xylophone to tell you to go to and your seat. We seats. can't even tell you what it is. We can't tell you because we'll get age restricted for it telling was, you. I wouldn't tell you because I don't want those words to come out of their mouth. It was. Unbelievable. It was like the dirtiest version of South Park done uh, live on stage with singing. All and, right. Back to week. Yes, sir. Awesome. Sorry. You remind me of uh, quickly the, yeah, I went to, I think it was maybe Jackass 2, and there was one scene involving a, like a. I know. We know the scene. We know the scene you're talking about and already. The, the, the kid next to me, I don't know how old he was, but his dad grabs him by the arm and is like, pull her out of here. <laughs> right in the middle of that, that crowd. I was expecting to see that about 50 times. I was waiting to just saw the see the in, in oh. indignancy. Is that what it's I don't know, dude. I was I was impressed with society in Fort Collins, Colorado. Mm. All right, I want to talk about uh, the most popular, uh, I'm not going to say easiest to use, but sprays, sprays for PM. And I'm bringing up two quick products that I believe in before we get into some other science with it. Uh, just a shout out. One OG of the show, what's up, Dinesh, with Optic Foliar. He has a great spray. ATAC for later, Ilium, if you're in Canada. Uh, it's copper sulfate at such a low rate. I've used it in late flower all the way up for like a few days before harvest and my 60 times scope to look at trikes on Paranoid. It takes care of PM. It's not gonna eliminate PM. I'm not gonna say any spray is gonna eliminate PM because no. it gives an over promise. Yeah. Well, if you're in there scouting and it got me through, I caught PM when I had two weeks to harvest. I had to go in there every three days. I'd go out with a little spray bottle, a little just all over. It's a lot of labor, uh, but it got me through. So shout out to ATAC from Optic Fuller. And one other one I have um, is Lost Coast Plant Therapy, uh, which they're also safe for flower. Uh, this was brought to me by DGC Rasufa and JR. Cool ass product. And their mode of action here is a citric acid, which changes the leaf surface pH. Because PM can't, it doesn't like anything. It won't live above eight on leaf surface. Huh. Well, acid's going to lower it. Maybe it doesn't live below eight. Uh, so this is a citric acid uh, derived from the cassava root, food grade, action, adjust pH of plant surface. Uh, it's also a preservative. The ingredient makes the pH of the plant inhospitable for powdery mildew and eliminates spores on contact due to antifungal properties. Mm. I got so, some cuts um, from uh, JR's Killer Cuts. You know, but I bought some, some cuts from over there. Open up the box. There's two clones in there and a bottle of Lost Coast. And I was like, how professional is uh, can we give him it's because he can he have a uh, legit shout out is he in business or what I, I mean you know i think we've you know he just yelled jr's killer cuts into your phone yeah find instagram you'll see it and uh, yeah the emergency that's what i that's what i just picked up ah you just saw my emergency growing oh, in there right so good yeah it's a little laggy hey, but maybe, it's good uh, maybe on friday during the dirty show we can show it oh same yeah, a couple more tricks I was thinking of is what about silica? What about Grambo? I was talking to Grambo about it. He mentioned silica, and yeah. it is true. The uh, 
I don't want to use the word invagination. I feel like I have to. The powdery mildew spore or what? I can't remember. Hyphy. Thank you, my friend. Uh, It's trying to get in and anchor itself inside that plant. It's splitting that plant tissue up, trying to to anchor itself in there. Uh, If there's silica in there, if there's a high silica content, supposedly it can't anchor itself well. It thickens up that cell wall. And what it wants is all that yummy, yummy sugar, all that that sugary, you know, pectin. Mm. sucrose stuff that's flowing through the veins that's what it wants that uh if you ever watch harley smith videos back in the day he talked about the interstitial wall space that's that that juicy pectin and so yeah calcium aminos and silica combined in the right ratios make it so big that they can't invaginate with a hyphae why if you are noticing powder mildew (laughs) drink every time i say uh, interstitial wall space that sounds like a rave doesn't it Come down to interstitial. I don't know. It doesn't, but I just, I'll go. Yeah, my kid's going to that, man. All right. <laughs> you mentioned what it likes to get in the leaf, too, is nitrogen. Don't overuse nitrogen. If you notice a powdery mildew infection, you should probably dial back nitrogen. Nitrogen, like rich leaves, loves to party there. Um, you mentioned silica. Uh, great. Yeah, silica is most available and your mono, whether you're using potassium silicate or a monosilicic acid to foliar spray, especially if you're dealing with something like PM or mix it in if you already have it. But they also showed it helped when applied to root zones. They put some raw, what do I say, silicon? Is that the actual rock? Like silicon, a raw earthy form? Okay, okay. Are you sure it's still silicon dioxide? Yeah. They amended that into beds in some study I was reading and that also those field plants had much less PM. So silica overall um, in the root zone and foliar spraying is gonna be a win. Yeah. So what I got else? one yeah, more. Found, yeah, you found yeah. this one, man. But we always talk about sulfur or that's been the go to for a long time is sulfur or sulfur burners. See a sulfur candle here. I know sulfur stinks and you don't want to mess with that stuff in flour. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so, like, sulfur spray, a soluble sulfur spray is pretty ready available on the Internet to whoever um, that works great. Uh, sulfur burner. When I worked in the grocery store, we actually like we just we had one that was like the store one, and we just would let people take it out and use it. And of course, we'd clean it when it came back or whatever. But oh, not yeah. that expensive, like 160 bucks. Sulfur burners uh, put literally raw sulfur in like a heating element, and your grow lights off, and you run it for like four to five hours, like at four times a week or something. If you have PM, and then you but you got to be careful to exhaust it when you're done. Nobody needs to be in there. You need good air movement in your grow. Follow the instruction shortly, never with the lights on and never after. Depends on how how heavy your flower, your plants flower. Um, two weeks in, you could probably still get away with a sulfur burn and two weeks into bloom. But after that, I wouldn't I wouldn't have with it at all for an eight yeah. to nine and ten week strain plus. Yeah, but it's I nice, Scotty. Think of it, it gives you don't like it. I like it because it gives a vapor effect, gives thorough coverage. What's the biggest downfall of somebody spraying shit for anything? Yeah, I miss a spot. Yep, you're 100% right. I do like the idea of it, but it's really easy to mess your plants up with it. I've talked to a bunch of people that talked to, that talked to me about how oh, I use a sulfur burner and just fried my plants. God forbid you do it with the light on. Don't do it with the light on. Don't run sulfur with the light on. But just you can, it's, it's, there's not a huge margin for error there. You did, these sulfur candles kind of tripped me out because this is a sulfur candle. It's um, it's nineteen dollars on the back of it. Um, <laughs> first thing it says, Scotty. Uh, please note this product will not clean the greenhouse. You gotta love instructions for some people. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's like you put a candle. It does like a ten by six room, and you leave it in there for uh, twelve hours. Like it sounds like a pretty easy grow hack to me. I don't know how effective it is. It's cheap. Um, it does what size like a 10 by six area. That's like the size of my grow room, you know, cubic feet as far as that goes. So I'm kind of intrigued by a sulfur candle. Man, I think there's some better, better options coming up, especially because of new tech that's out there. What is yeah, bicarbonate, into- dude? What is bicarbonate? I saw uh, you put this on your list. Bicarbonate, isn't it like a baking soda almost? There it is, oh, yeah. Sodium. Yeah, sodium calcium, bicarbonate. Sodium yeah. bicarbonate, calcium. Yeah, so that's bicarbonate. real basic. That's real high uh, high pH, correct? Yeah, baking soda is exactly. like a 10 or plus. Uh, very high pH. Garden bicarbonate, if I call it that. Uh, 
is effective. Changes the leaf surface negative about it. Oh, it's cheap as well. Um, you're gonna be spraying this on, but it leaves a little bit of residue. I don't like to see residue after sprays for some reason. I like my leaves to look nice. I don't want to see a white, especially if I'm in bloom. Yeah. I don't want to see residue. So I don't like there's other there's better ways to change the leaf surface pH than the bicarbonate, in my opinion. Not a little residue. It'll leave a residue, like a baking soda residue yeah. on there. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not totally down. One thing I will I'll throw in before I let you get, we got a post from dudegrows.com is um, yeah. I messed around with, I'm not going to give it a guarantee. I used to literally buy, I know you can uh, spray high pH water, like a pH of nine across, yep. you know, and just keep nailing it and keep nailing it and keep nailing it. And um, that's, if you have nothing on hand, that's another good way uh, just to try and beat it back a little bit. Yeah, didn't people so, use hydrogen peroxide when they were when the plants were in veg? I thought people were using it as well because H two O two the what is it? The other oxygen oxidizes off and it just becomes water. But it's a, a yeah. good, good cleaner. Yeah, no res, no residue on it. I think you got to be careful with your trikes, depending on that. Uh, yeah, I'm not talking yeah. with trikes, man. And you all bets are off once you got trichomes on there. All this is for trying to destroy it on your clones and early veg. Forget, man. Once you get uh, these plants with all sorts of leaves and shade spots on them, it's going to be a whole room full of them. It's going to be tough to beat this stuff. You've got to beat it 100 percent so it don't come back. So to have a few clones and whether you're dipping them in a solution or, you know, whatever, the sulfur burner should be able to get complete coverage. But if you just got some little clones, it'd be a lot easier. Um, for sure. And now how much of is your, of your grows in, infested and at what time? I agree. Every time I've caught PM, it's barely, it's like on two or one plants. You know, I have some always had pretty small grows. I get it when you have a big grow, shit can get out of hand a little quicker. You should have a scouting schedule. You should be able to catch powdery mildew when you have a 10% or less infestation. Maybe that's just my fantasy world. But if you can and you can do that, you can usually keep on top of it. Obviously, your labor is going to go up a shit ton in scouting and spot spraying to get you through bloom. But if you found it, like, yeah, if I walk into a grow and they're like, what do you think, man? Do I have too much PM? And they have like 25% or more of it on leaves and close to flowers and all that. I'm like, yeah, this is a really hard judgment call. I'm leaning towards saying you should just chop this shit clean real hard. Right. Right. Yeah, man. So what is your about, IPM? I mean, g- give me your actual IPM as far as we know cultural practices. You don't want to bring stuff, you don't want to walk from, you know, a buggy area or another grow into your grow. Keep clean. Tools. And just for newer growers that might get confused about the PM to IPM thing, PM being powdery mildew, IPM being integrated pest management, which also should be integrated pest and fungi management, right? Yeah. Well, I guess a fungi Pe- is pest a and, pest. Pest and pathogen. Oh, look at you. Man. IPM right now or in veg is scouting and using, which I haven't yet, but I will be, I should be foliar spraying more in veg, but I use a monosilicic acid, which obviously that's just one part of an IPM. That's not a silver bullet for powdery mildew. And I don't have a big grow. I can scout almost and I keep maintain my canopy. I do a lot of thinning every fourth day, man. These plants try to get so bushy Beautiful. so I can see most of the plants, so I can see the leaves, so a lot of scouting. If I knew I was going to get powdery mildew, you probably won't like this. Again, I'm intrigued by that freaking sulfur candle. If I can light a sulfur candle and veg twice, like once a week, just knowing spores might be creeping, doesn't affect anything in the grow, like I'm kind of down for that, but in it, it just hasn't been a problem, so I, I'm not doing anything proactive other than keeping a really good eye out. I could be, I could be spraying one of those other sprays if I wanted, the Lost Coast Plant Therapy, one which if anything else is creeping around, it's good to take care of little mites or rips or whatever else. Um, but uh, I don't have a spray IPM. And that you could call me lazy. I don't know if you do either. But no. I think people are more lazy in the sense of scouting is where they get lazy, spending time in their grow and really looking through all of it. And cleaning your plants up. I'm a meticulous staker. You know, my plants are... Uh, there's airflow around each branch. I mean, that is a big deal when you've got a leaf laying on another leaf. It creates that microclimate. Mm-hmm. And that's why I always like to say that's why it's called uh, integrated pest management and not just pest management. You're supposed to integrate these things into other things. So that way it's not this big wall you got to climb. It's just healthy plants is part of pest management. And foliar feeding is pest management. You know, rotating products is pest yeah. management. As long as we're talking about words mattering, 
It's also called pest management. It's not called pest elimination. Ooh. Because when you have pests, you're man. When you have a greenhouse, you're going to be managing pests. Mm. Okay. You're going to be managing mold and mildews and uh, spider mites and fungus gnats. And this guy's Zen. It's, it's not a solution, it's a practice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can I have a pamphlet? <laughs> Can I buy drugs? <laughs> <laughs> we got more. We got more coming here. Let's do some shout outs to some producers, man. It's about time you heard Scotty mention uh, the 420 Dirty Hour. We're calling it the Dirty Hour because there's a lot of stuff we don't show on the show. A lot of things we don't talk about. Not like we go crazy. Um, but yeah, we're showing that every Friday, 420 over in Discord. Releasing it over onto Patreon via Vimeo so you can watch it there if you missed the live. Basically like a, a fourth show, yo. A fourth show with a lot of fun and the crew. We all hang out over there. <laughs> and we're uh, behind the scenes. Out, oh, yeah. my God. We, uh, the stream broke last week and everyone got to just see us hang out. Oh, my God. Fun. You have to let me know when we're actually on. Scott was. Right, well, from now on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that. I was the only one that got the gravity of that moment. Where's the pictures of the goddamn dog? Oh, we're on? It's ponderous. <laughs> we got some newer DDC producers. I'm like, shout out to Honey Bucket and Gnarly Crud. What's going <laughs> yeah, on? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How about Sea Sparrow? 420. <laughs> that's my code name. Let me ask you a question. Where's Wacky Waldo? Uh, 79. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, it's Wacky Waldo 70. Okay, it's a code. Dude. Dude. <laughs> Rose.com forward slash support. You guys are missing out. You still, DDC producers, $100 off of Pulse Pro. Log into Patreon and scroll to that post. There's a coupon code there for you to get the best deal on my favorite grow gadget ever. Love that thing. Monitors everything in your grow if you're PPFD, CO2, and $100 off is a pretty damn good deal. Um, we have real growers hooking it up. Uh, we have all kinds of things. Banner, thanks everybody that responds to Banner survey. We put up a poll about organic and synthetic growing. Me and Scotty got in a little bit of a Discussion, Scotty's thought maybe 80% of our people are it's are organic. Check the facts, man. <laughs> was it on text? I can't remember if it was text or call. It could be. But yeah. it was awesome to rely on the DDC to say, hey, let's see what they think. So I appreciate you guys taking part in those polls. Too much more to list, guys. Go to dubros.com forward slash support. Ten dollars a month pays for itself ten times. Comment, like, subscribe, and don't forget to check out our pros, dubros.com forward slash pros where all the coupon codes are listed saving money on vetted gear now let's check out tech man scotty you got tech here uh, you know what? from inspired we, uh from we, a post on dudegrows.com i was gonna read the post man because this is what got me going uh all right i'm gonna read this it one, use, dude. use code strain dependent on dudegrows.com if you guys need to go over there and register we're, we're keeping it tight strain dependent will get you in though all right, yeah, ahead. keep the slackers out. ProGuard or AeroClean 420 from Rolling Stone. And uh, yeah, I didn't know about these products, so very cool. What's up, DGC? I was recently, recently considering purchasing an air purifier system to help ensure I don't get PM. Every once in a while, it seems to pop up, and I would really like to buy a unit that could help eradicate the problem. I was looking at the ProGuard unit and another unit called the AeroClean 420. <clears throat> Both units seem to have some sort of photo oxidizing catalyst and UV bulb, but the ProGuard unit states that are released in a dry H2. They are released in a dry H2O2. That's just what we're talking about: hydrogen peroxide into the air to act as an to act of cleaning agent. Uh, whereas the AeroClean claims to have zero emissions, zero H2O2 or ozone. Remember, H2O2 yeah, what does it is. Have? If you break off the oxygen from H2O2, it's just H2O. Uh, I was wondering if anyone has an experience with them or knows anything about them, whether they're safe or not, or actually work. Thanks again, DGC. And this is pretty right. cool, man. What did you yes. find? I mean, what is the, this is the aerial clean? It doesn't admit H2O2 or ozone. So what the heck does it do? And they also yeah. like promote on their site one of those. It's, it's, I love the angle. NASA used it. NASA. NASA. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the spaceship, bro. Yeah. Hang on. I found out some information about it. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Because yeah, I, see, uh, you know I found out that it's are... expensive as the all holy L. Yeah, they're very expensive. Here you go. So if you want to scroll down on the next one, don't show it yet because it has that horrible, horrible, wicked plant. Uh, the innovative dash solutions one. 
Uh, it is called How ProGuard Air Purifiers Work. And it's pretty interesting. Uses an oxidation process. And is this... Hy- oh, so it just makes us... It's oxidizing. So it's making hydrogen peroxide really quick. And then it's evaporating the oxygen molecules oxidizing off yeah and just becoming water the uv light to activate the proprietary catalyst developed by nasa and then Mm -hmm. um it turns into turning moisture into dry hydrogen peroxide interesting i don't even know there's such thing as dry hydrogen peroxide so as the air passes through the spores pass through they're killed my worry about these devices is where they're mounted granted they are a little well a bit spendy we're looking at you know the six hundred dollars for this one uh that will only do like a five by five tent or something. But yeah. regardless, um, I worry about when you mount one of these in a grow because they rely on the spores passing through them. So that in turn is you better have some badass air movement in your grow. You better anyway, man. Where you're getting PM. This is true. <laughs> and like everything else we talk about with PM, I such a such a pain in the ass. No, you can't be sold this thing and the guy's like i guarantee it won't get pm it's a help it's a preventative but you can't guarantee it's going to take care of all spores if they come into the grow it's got to be a huge help man i think you'd have to mess up pretty bad if you had one of these in your tent and you still got pm because you should be removing or at least uh killing a lot of the spores right consistently it's going to really inhibit sporulation i would think man this is yeah, the best word to say ever. And Bipolar. I didn't put it on here. One other, yes, sir. One other thing, if you're doing an air intake, as I am occasionally now, since the air is so cold and every once in a while my grow needs it, even though now that my lights are dialed down 50%, um, oh, uh, filter that shit. So uh, HEPA, I, I ordered a four inch HEPA intake, which simply looks like a KNN car filter. If you ever put one of those on a rice rocket back in the day, like I did on my CRX. Can't say that uh, anymore. They, <laughs> they, can't, they restrict <laughs> they restrict airflow pretty decent that style. I don't know if 40 control is still in business. Those are uh, filters that are like a foam oiled mushroom. They're the same. It's like a it's just like a filament that goes in an old diesel filter on a tractor or something. Sure. And they're cleanable in a dishwasher. They're nice, but do something for your air intake if you're pulling air in definitely important um and then and, you know it depends on where if you have a tent in your living room not as much it, but i i'm in an outdoor garage scotty you're in an outdoor garage you're a lot closer to you got a farm behind you you got fields on the side of you it's shizzle. Hey, you're surrounded a tent in my living room i've got people showing up from all over the place who knows where they were right. to my living room you know and then that air intake is sucking you know sucking through the tent yeah yeah, man. <clears throat> this uses bipolar ionization too. Man. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> bipolar ionization ions uh, kill pathogens, including mold, mildew, viruses, and bacteria. Uh, ProGuard creates plasma with extreme high levels of both positive and negative charges. Bipolar ions. <laughs> it is cool, man. I mean, now this is a big old business. You can't have one. You can't have one of these giant facilities going down for PM. Uh, so there's these real solutions for it. It's pretty neat. Very neat. I like it. I'm digging. I'm digging. I was. I don't know which one you should it. buy. Yeah. We're we supposed to help them pick which one we should buy. Because I don't know. They <laughs> yeah, both seem cool. Oh <laughs> But the second one had the better website. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they both seem interesting. Uh, it depends. But really, they didn't mention what the size of their space was. Um, because the uh, the ProGuard had the cheaper model for around 600 something for a smaller space. Right. I think it was like five by six or something. For the Aero Home, that only went down to like, I think 16 or 1500 was the cheapest one. So, but it is a good investment. If you've had PM take out a grow, I mean, if, and you know it's going to be around, I, I'm for it. It's just something that I haven't been able to justify the cost on because PM has an F with me here. It's more, you know, the mud oh. rot, which is a whole nother subject, but the silica Please. is also supposed to help out with that. You don't believe in the whole knocking on wood thing? You just said that PM yeah. hasn't messed, messed yeah. with you yet? Yeah. I don't yeah. Know, is this wood? <laughs> you have the same table. It's for Mike. Right? 
We don't own any Harder real wood over here. <laughs> we get to Damn, you're right. I don't know if any real wood. <laughs> I think it's. Oh, here we go. Too. Hold up. DGC rolling tray. Real wood here, guys. Do grow ah, up on both sides. the wood that makes it good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Click this nighttime application of UVC to control cucumber powdery mildew. I found this, and this is uh, APS publication. This peer reviewed research right here. And uh, this is talking about using UVC, and the short of it is that uh, a dose of UVC applied every night or higher dose applied every fourth night were both effective for eliminating powdery mildew without significantly reducing leaf area. Because a lot of these things, man, you can get powder, you can use ozone to kill powdery mildew, but it'll mess up your plants if you're not really careful and your terpenes. So there are things that will kill powdery mildew like the plasma field and all that but uvc seems really promising i i'm kind of down i want to know more because this company uh clean light i think they have a handheld device here and i believe it emits uvc you literally walk around the grow with it and like yeah you know <laughs> and give us some comments if anybody's using one of these or knows like how well they work it's pretty cool in concept as far and i know they've been in business for quite a while um, yeah. But it's interesting to have handheld, yeah, just wandering around on the grow there. What I mean, do you could think, you imagine guys? how high your neighbors would think? And if they just seen you out there <laughs> wanding your plant, <laughs> like they already know you're a stoner. And then they're like, oh, man, man, the shroom season again. I would go well, ahead. Well, if, if you were to buy that, I'd read that, that yellow warning sticker. I'd read that some bitch real thorough. Yeah, the C stands for cancer. Just making sure. Because I, I don't know what. I'm just watching this video. It's, it's triggering my spidey senses and something about it's going, I just feel like that guy, he's going to glow in the dark in 10 years. I don't know. I, so just do your homework. Yeah, UV rays, what, penetrate skin cells? Is that right? Yeah. <clears throat> UVA is the your, more harmless stuff. Can alter your DNA. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, anyway, I th thought that was interesting. So UBC is something. Weren't you making friends with? Uh, is it Shane from Migro? Yeah. That's yeah. Shane. Yeah. He's got yeah. The UV. Uh, UVB. I believe is the UVB is mainly what their light is for uh, enhancement and flower. Yeah, a little stress, a little terpene stress. Yeah. Right now, the only way to get C is through. Uh, actual like burning gas like the hps style like uh, it's not hps but it's in the old hid compressed gas style leds can't produce c too volatile breaks it down yeah sunlight baby got it all yeah no yes, one's seen anything out uh, i have a fall of prohibition report <clears throat> yes i do before you hop uh, into it, you didn't let uh, you didn't let uh, Grambo show off our our, our our merch sexy enough last time. Grambo, fill that up one more time. Just come so on, come on. Got here. We got a whole dudegrows.com forward slash shop, guys. We got hoodies in. We got like three different hats kicking right now. Uh, rolling trays. If you pick up the DDC lighter bundle, that is a thick lighter that comes with a nice glass one hitter, DDC logoed. Uh, Grove journals, patches, pins. We're doing all right. Our game's okay, Scotty. Dudegrows.com forward slash shop. <laughs> DDC producers, log into Patreon before you go spend. There, There is a coupon code for you to get, I think it's 20% off on merch. We're always yes. taking you care of you cats. So dudegrows.com forward slash shop. And today shop. in the back, in the behind the scenes for us, very big day for us today as far as us and YouTube. We won't get into it on air. Just suffice to say, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming that you guys can help support us even more. You guys are going to be able to buy merch right in the YouTube app. It's so cool. We're going to be able to do it. So yeah. yeah we'll Grandpa's so excited. Would so the head of YouTube have just been baked? Did somebody dose the head of YouTube with an edible? Yeah. All of a sudden, YouTube <laughs> Gave, everything's cool they gave us a wink saying hey dude girls you guys are gonna be all right and i was what so ah. exciting stuff coming i'm i'm excited as long as we're uh, complimenting here dude you did a great job with this store you and banner do this store uh with all the dude grows business i show up and do the shows and all this stuff is taken care of website store membership advertising tight work brother yeah really tight work yeah i appreciate it Working hard for the crew here, man. Uh, one more thing, gdccup.com. 
Go there, be there, June 1st, save the date, guys. Again, like everything, GDC producers, you get 25% off to come to the cup, to compete at the cup, to come to the VIP party. So make sure you log in to Patreon and get your coupon code. Everybody else, ddccup.com, man, just hook it up. It's going to be a great time, 50 strains of cannabis. You know how we do it. It's a one-day event, throwdown. Anybody can come on in and compete, bring your weed. Everybody's a judge. Uh, and, man, it's going to be fun. Talk to Raider Dank Vader. He's down. Pizza double time, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was Am so I allowed fun. to compete? People kept asking if I was going to put in my my bud, and I was like, I don't think I'm allowed. Oh. Ah, you can. You're not going to win with that shit. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, who's going to know? I don't uh, care. Come on, DGC vote. Somebody get indignant. Nah, nah. Yeah, I'm telling you, you can't offend society anymore. Oh, yeah, you can. Sorry. <laughs> what was with that crowd, man? I don't, just don't get it. Don't worry. Everybody gets offended for everything, man. It's good for business. Ah. Uh, hey. Save it for the dirty show. Bring it. Yeah. What you, got? you know what? Uh, Grambo is just saying that YouTube sent us uh, an email saying that they don't hate us anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, it just. We've been harmful content for the longest time. We're, we're not no harmful longer anymore. harmful content. Yeah. That's. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, DGC, for supporting us through the rough times. Maybe we're seeing the dawn. No guarantee, but. It felt so cool to be shadow banned. It just oh. said, hey, you guys aren't. <laughs> vermin. Vermin anymore. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. We were just, I think last week I said that uh, at the grocery store, there was a receipt for, uh, on the back of the receipt was a coupon for a dispensary. Yeah. It is just out there now, man. Here, do me, Grandpa. This is, I think, from California. This is Bonds. Bonds. And there's just a CBD, <laughs> what, penny promotional item. <laughs> the best CBD. I mean, all right, that's CBD. But that's yeah, I mean, there is a ton. Do me a favor. Click that one up top. The cannabis women's ad is interesting. <laughs> right? Weeds come a long way, baby. Yeah. And it's the Coco Chanel of cannabis. Uh, and it is Weedy Parker. Yeah. You remember those ads? We've come a long way, baby. Not really. Yeah, it's old like fifties and sixties ads about women. Like we've come a long way. How so old it's are you, a man? You know, I'm an old soul, Scotty. <laughs> Grew up in the 1910s. Uh, anyway, that's I thought we new fad called the internet. Me and Grandpa were asking ourselves why YouTube is willing to uh, consider <laughs> us. We were, Scott was like dubious. He was like, hey, "So uh, what?" What, we're going to walk in there and get fucking domed like in Casino? Yeah. And we're getting married, boys! And we're just getting domed by Susan? We'll see, man. We'll see. Hey, do me a favor. <clears throat> Look at the good weed. Now, what would you do if you were driving and you saw this? Oh, up, uh, it says good. No, it's up uh, next one. Uh, good weed. There you go. Oh, dude, this is... What if you seen... Like, if that's I was driving Denver. my kid and I seen that, I'd be like, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it. That's Denver. This is literally... When I go to Raising Cane's, there's a banner just like this. You know what I'd say? It's that wrap. Is that one of those clear wraps on the J? I don't know. It could be Keith, maybe? Uh, you know what i tell my kid when I seen that sign? If I was trying to raise her right? You never get good weed from a pre-roll. Uh -huh. Remember that, kid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to read the fine print under it, but I can't. Yeah, really do, do not that. operate motor vehicle or machinery under the influence of drugs. <laughs> Just don't. It's is that a suggestion or that's the law? It's suggestion. <laughs> it's all suggestions, bro. Uh, Even the law is just a suggestion. Yes. If the glove don't fit, I'm gonna go home and. Let's see what else we got, man. Is <laughs> dude, scroll the next one. There's a couple good ones I found that just did weed advertising. Dude, I mean, if you're just driving, this is in Michigan. You're just driving a giant pot sign that says penny pre-rolls with purchase. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, it's getting out there, right? Oh, yeah. This is Denver, man. I think that's, is that Denver? No, no, no. This is, is Michigan, but this Michigan, is how Denver yeah. looks. In Denver, you know how you can do adopt a highway? All yeah. of our highways are adopted by dispensaries, weed brands. My my personal house <laughs> is uh, uh, sponsored by The Clear. Remember the dabs, The Clear? <laughs> my part of the highway by my house is the clear. Oh, I thought his house was sponsored by the clear. That like, hey, you guys want to sponsor my house? The clear? Like, I'm open to it. You pay my Actually, rent I'm not. Shame on you. I know. Clear. That was weird, man. That was weird stuff. All right, keep rolling. Come on. Keep rolling. What do we got, man? Oh, yeah. Bro, this is a fall of prohibition. Michigan. Michigan. Discover the new Michigan state flower. <sighs> Order ahead. <laughs> the green koi. 
Yeah. That's it. I like the name. Crazy I like logo. the name and the, the imagery. Mm. They, but they better have a koi pond at their store. I like this next papers. one. What do you get? Yeah, this is good. Lake and bake. The lake and <laughs> bake. <laughs> it's the same guy, Green Koi. Green Koi. Shout out, Green Koi. Ah, it's pretty funny, man. It's pretty cool. Uh, man, it's I wonder adult- how much it is to advertise on those billboards. Have you ever looked into a real grower's billboard? They don't call no. them, uh, it doesn't say dispensary. Look, it says adult use provisioning center. That is weird. Right. It's the AUPC. Is that an upside down pineapple there as you walk in? <laughs> it's an upside down koi. You don't uh, want to know what that means. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> uh, anyway, prohibition is falling down. I mean, you can see it everywhere. Crazy. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I dig it for sure. Um, not soon enough, though. Still got too many. I was just speaking about uh, so the people and there's so many people in prison still for minor possession. Like at this point, wow. So and it's that's still kind of crazy to think about when you show all this. I, that's what makes me think of it. You show me like these billboards and all this craziness, and I just still think there's still are. It's kind of just insane. Anyway, I, I, I'm rambling on that thought. We have comments. Oh, uh, yes. and I'll let you take this first one, Scotty, because I I think you're. I don't know if you're pulling this to learn or to try and bother me or just have fun. Uh, I am not trying to bother you, sir. People listen to Be Better Growers, and I do this show with the byproduct of being a better grower. I was trying to understand that cloning from clone thing. We were asking, you know, what a couple shows ago is, you know, cloning Uh from clone is that, you know, degrade the the genetics. And I was trying to think of how they reinvigorate the genetics and uh, and clean them up and i was wrong i said it was by back crossing and that's i wasn't correct so jack do oh damn do i really want to learn from jack the fool (laughs) (laughs) jack the fool jack Jack the fool (laughs) uh but this is great thank you dgc uh when we're all cool to each other we all learn and so at 12 minutes scott's talking about cleaning the genetics which is done with tissue culture remember i was saying you back cross to clean the genetics up yeah that's what i remember it's the tissue culture and damn it sounded good at the time it's like back cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, thinking yeah. of it, yeah, but it's a <laughs> back crossing is about bringing back a characteristic that was lost from one of the grandparents. Oh, so, you so know, it's yeah. Claiming genetic traits, yeah. not genetic purity. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. You see where I get confused, man. For it's example, confusing. <laughs> oh, epigenetic science is confusing. For example, if you made a blueberry by gas and started an I, <laughs> yeah, I'm not messing with you dude all right i'm not okay (laughs) if you made a blueberry by gas and started an ibl f1 f2 but over time you lost too many of the blueberry terps and so you bred it back with that terp with one of its grandparents and tried to stabilize that trait you lost it does make sense you take the original you got something that's a few uh, a few uh what would you call uh, generations yeah, down yeah. the line? It starts losing something from the grandparents. So you take that and you bring it back to get that original stuff in there, man. It's a, mm-hmm. no, mm-hmm. you do really. I, I Same thing w- happened to Marty McFly, bro. Don't worry about it. I wouldn't be able to, <laughs> I wouldn't go and do this. I'd rather just grow big dank buds than go and breed and all this stuff. But I do find the, the process and the idea behind it really interesting. Like when there's the idea that there's a bunch that look like the parents, and then there's some that are, you know, that, you know, what do you got your unicorns that you can get? And then if you keep on going, you can get something that's super, super stable. Just the idea of that is, is neat. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, it's, it's a way, there's so many ways to go and keep having fun with it. I haven't gotten there yet myself as far as the breeding game goes and yeah shout out to soup the gardener he shows how easy it is with just small spaces and small tents but let me come continue on i got a comment we always talk about home groves like can they take this away from us like with things changing are they going to make it so it's only available at the pharmacy and say no more home growing once it goes federally legal they try and throw some crazy rules out there and at primal primate which look at that. This is the first time I got that three backwards right. I was gonna call this guy Primal Primat Three at first. Ah, <laughs> that's but a cool name. <laughs> um, Primal Primate says, to this day, I still chuckle at the idea of trying to tell home growers they can't won't be allowed to grow. Uh, like, have people not been paying attention 
People can and will continue to grow no matter what anyone has to say about it. People ran a thousand plant grows when a hundred got you life. Yeah, you think they'll be scared of the you think they'll be scared of the consequences in a semi-legal environment? Weed growers are a unique animal in that aspect. We don't mind it down. In. Truth be told, it's how most of us older head were raised and on pre- and prefer it, to be honest. Like threatening to throw water on fish. I don't know how legal cannabis till <laughs> but I was old, man. By then I was already an outlaw. Um, I didn't know legal cannabis. It's a great analogy, but it's like throwing poisonous water on us. Like, <laughs> like we'll take it, but I don't want it. I'm going to need some help with that one, man. Like threatening <laughs> yeah, you guys water break. on a fish. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> like this dude's like OG gangster where he's just like, Threaten me with prison time again? Psh, ain't nothing but a squirrel. Oh, I get it, man. All right. Like throwing water on a Fly fish, man. Fu- <laughs> water uh, going fish. for a minimum mandatory for weed mm-hmm. is ridiculous, man. Yeah. Okay, that ain't throwing water So he's no being fish. hard, and I respect it, but I don't want to go back. No. Hell no, man. Oh. It's, but I hang on. I just want to say that you are 100% right. The genie out of, is out of the bottle. My, gr- not my grandmother, my uh, mother-in-law, and, you know, all sorts of older people like me smoking weed it's not the demon that they thought it was and you are not going to get them to outlaw it and there's no way that you're going to get this kind of, at least in this country in the united states of america mm-hmm. it's not going back to uh you can't grow it at your house in california or colorado yeah i like it i like it uh I have one more comment here that I wanted to take to motivate growers, to motivate people that could be growers, because I don't want to over uh, complicate things. This is at comfortably numb 9342. It says, sure, I'd love to buy a five by five tent and an HVAC system and all that stuff. This is like when we're talking about sealed environment, you know, get a humidifier, get a dehumidifier, maybe get an air conditioner. It says, but I don't have the room or the money. And with 35% humidity, I'm worried about the plant I harvest and dry. Hopefully it won't be dry so fast that it tastes bad. And these are like what well, can come into your head as a new grower thinking we were just talking about, oh, I'm going to maintain the right VPD with this humidity and my CO2 is 1100. These are all things I'm trying to, you know, have fun with and become a perfect grower. I just like to simplify it. If you can put a tent in an area you're comfortable living in, like it's warm for you and you're comfortable, you're going to more than likely have an environment that's okay to start to succeed to have a grow and smokable product. Don't be that intimidating. <clears throat> yeah, comfortably numb. I can see by the uh, language in, in the uh, comment that you're questioning and kind of negative about the idea. It really isn't that hard and you really don't need that much. A plant can grow in an environment that that uh you that's comfortable for you is comfortable for your plant <clears throat> i have a two by four tent over there i bought the setup or i was given the setup from ac infinity uh it has a temperature control uh, humidity controller it is not hard that's what real growers is all about the grow dots the recharge the buckets uh even if you are going to water yourself this doesn't don't be intimidated no and, it's not and, hard. and i don't have any of that stuff right now like i am running as raw and cheap and as basic as a man humanly can <laughs> and i checked my plants right before i came here and my ambient uh rh in my house is 12 percent right now so 35 don't worry about it man you my, can do it my buds came out perfectly add a little humidification create a lung room inside of you know yeah you can do things it sounds fancy it's not we have a 75 dollar humidifier that's got like six gallon reservoir in and my wife bought it from amazon and just because it's so dry here your skin will crack we have a run in the house put something like that in your lung room mm-hmm. help a ton and lung room sounds fancy as it could be as much as just Having it's it in your bedroom, ambient, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the corner of your bedroom, you know, your bedroom just, just is the long room, the buds. yeah. But for five, six hundred bucks, I would think that you could get into growing good quality cannabis. And always and- remind yourself, add up how much money you spend either buying on the black market or dispensaries. How much are you spending on cannabis right now, and how much is that equipment? It's probably more equivalent than you think. I was thinking about buy that. once, cry once. Well, I like that. Did you make that? No, no I think I got that from Kenny. I'm kidding, man. <laughs> Kenny told me that once. Hey, by the way, you can just join uh, DGC, 10 bucks a month, and just bug one eyed cat cannabis for next six months or so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude forward slash report. I did want to comment. 
Uh, and uh, we don't let our, as, as Grandpa's like, I, 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 grow, I grow with bare bones. We, we don't let our producer have any nice stuff. We want him to grow, we'll see what the lower threshold, what he can produce with nothing. Please, sir, I like bear. another taste. <laughs> 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 <And> more? <laughs> oh, hey, let's shout out a couple of producers before the news here, man. Uh, I think we can handle more. Yeah, comments. Thanks for the comments, guys. I'm going to give it up to Get in the Pool. 27 and Gate Smasher, Scotty. <laughs> DGC Gate Smasher. I love it. I mean, I know this isn't the Eric the Actor, but Eric the Actor, all right? And, <laughs> and some Mori Buds. Some Mori Buds. Seymour <laughs> Buds. Is that, well, why is the E there? Seymour? Some Mori. Some Mori Buds, man. <laughs> Um, oh, I got what guys. the dude's got now, man. <laughs> yeah. More buds. Mm. Some more. What could get Thank in you, the BGC. pool 27 mean? Get in the pool. Genetic pool? Straightforward. That's like gate smasher means gate smasher. Straight up, you know? I don't know. I think they're going for man. Hyman. <laughs> Become DGC. Dudegrows.com forward slash support. What do you got? <laughs> News, Scotty. Man, just a couple quick, quick hits. Uh, this one's just been all over the news feed. Uh, it is zapping plants. Hang on. Now, well, there we go. How zapping roots with electricity can supercharge plant growth. And yeah, we've got a, a bunch of questions in the comment thing, and I hadn't really responded to it because I wasn't familiar with it. Right. So we saved it up for this. And uh, yeah. Uh, I need yeah, to have all the nine volt battery I'm out. Dude, I actually started doing research on that, and the one with the nine volt did so terrible. Like you felt bad. Nine volt just is electric. You know, it needs like just micro volts, and uh, yeah, <laughs> just watch the plant get electrocuted for forty five days. <laughs> I just mean, anyway, this this uh, was from India, I think, some uh, university in India, probably the University of India. I'm imagining, man. Calcutta. No, just kidding. Uh, but uh, they made this cellulose. Uh, media like a cellulose grow media that's made out of like uh i think it might have been seaweed might have been the starting material but it's just cellulose and then uh, they can put an electric charge in it and this they did it with like bean plants and the electric charge ended up uh uh stimulating growth by 50 percent. man it's pretty neat wow super cool it's interesting, um, man. Could <laughs> be, be a new product that we need to Grambo really... click. Will you click on my electroculture? Thanks. You can buy these on realgrowers.com. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can buy it from Dealzer. What the hell? What, what kind of brand can you trust more than Dealzer.com? <laughs> Dealzer. <Timo. laughs> what does it say? Electroculture yield growth booster. For rapid plant growth. Now there's a YouTube title. <laughs> Dealzer. I will use that, man. The wow. deal. I'm the deal dozer. Can that be my brother? <laughs> Can that be my brother, man? Yeah, I got a brother, Trip, who's real mellow. And then I got a brother, Dealzer. Strictly business. <laughs> they call me Dealzer. Uh, the deal. Shout out, Deal Dozer. Idiocracy. Let's, let's do it. Deal Dozer. Those random pictures on here. Did you scroll to the right? Like, no. The pictures are showing. Go over. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is happening? Yes. I guarantee is... you, none of these people use deals. <laughs> no. All of these go the... all the way to the right. Oh bro. my god, they're yeah. so good. This is a fetish site. <laughs> the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she yeah. uses deals or plant stakes for that. This is sure. like behind the scenes footage <laughs> of like. Honey, I shrunk the kids. Yeah, that is so odd. Those are some bananas, though. That's a dandelion. <laughs> How much are these things? I mean, hey, they're only 15 But No, I'm just kidding. Is that the mentality there? Yeah. Or is that just went for the person that has everything? Uh, the deal dozer. Deal dozer. Um, what else, man? I think, that, oh, yeah. So I just started Googling electroculture, and I got this one, man. Electroculture for beginners. What do you think? Well, man? I think it's two right. books in one. It is two books in one, which is why you have to buy it. You can't afford not to buy it. Unlock the secret not... power of electricity to maximize your out agriculture. What, have faster what is more bankrupt. bullshit? Two two books in one or buy one, get one free? Which one is more bullshit? Dude, uh, buy one, get one free both, got me at the frozen pizza aisle last week. Yeah, man. two books in one is more bullshit. 
Zuma. Huh. I think it's the same, really. It's really no, it is the same. It's just something about <laughs> it feels more wrong. It's like, well, there's only one book, though. How can anyway, I thought it looked cool? All right. Grandma already bought it, so I wrote it. Did you know what else, Scotty? You can book. do a promotion. You can get two eight ounces of recharge and one 16 ounce, bro. Ooh. Wow, man. I believe Scott used to say that. He's cut it in half and double it. Yeah, he cut it in half and double it. Yeah, just do that. <laughs> That's not me. That's Sir Harden Thick. Wow. Right? I stole it from him. <laughs> oh, what do we got? Some social media? Having a good yeah. time. Thank you for hanging out, everybody. If you've laughed, comment, like, subscribe. Help grow the channel. I know, first high of the day for me. This has been a blast. I love it. If we helped you almost. grow, help us grow. Wow, dude, gross.com. <laughs> Do me a favor. Is this, re- is this real, Grambo? I should have said this for Saturday, but yeah. I was just confused, man. Is this guy real? Is he that bored? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, really- this is a whole b- branch no. of the internet. Baloney. No, yeah, they just do a thousand freaking takes. I don't know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I follow a dude who has a channel of his trick shots, and he's got a second channel of the behind the scenes of the trick shots. They'll do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of takes, but this is his job. He makes a, he makes a living doing this, so, you know, he puts in the hours. And he's overweight, so God bless him. I mean, dude, keeping going at any job for a matter of time is tough. Yeah, you don't think your dream job can become a job, but it can, man. It really can. So you got to keep kicking them footballs, baby. There you go. Did Grandma rewind to the beginning of this one, if you would? And just watch. Speaking of jobs, somebody recorded this. This person cannot. Oh, boy. They cannot get. They're just stuck now, man. It's somebody driving a semi. No, it's painful to watch, but... Well, what's he think is doing? What do you think? Don't listen to me, Dr. Grandpa. Fill out and they get the forklift out there. They'd be good to go. Yeah. yeah. All right. You got to wait for tow, buddy. That guy, that guy has some angst. He's just like, I'm going to get it. Exactly, dude. You can just tell. He, no, I mean, he's dude, sick of his drunk. wife pushing oh, him around. No. <laughs> he's sick of it all. No, he is sick of it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. That was truck's broken. Look at the guy with the broken. camera is like falling. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, God. No, he did it. He still going. Oh, oh, my God. He's still going. Oh, Look, God. he don't care. He don't care. He don't care. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> Oh my God! Wow! Dude. Wow! Insane. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Yeah. All right. That might be the best video we've ever shown in the <laughs> history of this show. You just gotta move forward in life, man. When you're stuck in the now, jam. Are, wow. are those guys geniuses, though? Is that trailer set for decommissioned, and they knew it would go by? I think there's potential there. I don't know. Man. I think that might have been set up. Ah, oh, this thing went it, viral. It, just, it felt real. <laughs> Can we have a this conversation? Like look. This this looks like my old dog. I had a rat terrier Here, show uh, a chihuahua mix. She looked just like a bat. <laughs> that is a bat. That's that a, is bat. a baby bat. That's a baby bat. You picked up Mr. Fox. Yeah, it looks like a little puppy. Hey, little banana. Oh, Jesus. Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> that thing flies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like the so bat rescue like or something. Oh. Is, it, um, is that the cutest thing ever? Yeah, I, I win, right? I got the craziest video and the cutest no. one ever. I'm yeah. afraid of his teeth. Look at his teeth. He might. Yeah, oh. yeah his teeth are. I mean, I'm not afraid days. of bats, but no maybe. Creepy. He's going to open his around. wings. Oh, that, they are creepy, right? <laughs> I mean, that thing's cute as anything, but. Yeah. I don't know. Flying rat. They are pretty much flying rats. They make some damn good fertilizer. I was explaining to the guys over like breakfast and coffee about bat guano this morning. <laughs> they had to listen because I'm their boss. It's different than seabird guano, you know. Yeah. Depends where the bats are from. I'll like, let yeah, you man. guys decide which is a cuter bat. That or this. No. <laughs> I'm back, Graham. Uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, Grandpa, you're, you're a good dad. He sends me pictures all the time of him and his daughter. And yeah, my, my kid loves Batman. Yeah, Grandpa's always. And then, but, like Batman. but then when your friends can Photoshop too, 
Ah, it's awesome. It's like, oh, you bastards. I'm, I'm the one that does this to people. You're not supposed to do it back to me. Good luck. Uh, good luck. Everyone can good Photoshop. Time today. Comment, like, subscribe, share the show, stay higher, and uh, make sure you catch our last show, man. We've been doing some lives for you. Going over there, click on that live tab, and you can check out our live panel shows. It's been a blast hanging out with other growers and just jiving. Yes, it's been cool, bro. Till then, take her easy, dude. Thanks, Grambo. Thank you, Grambo. Goodbye.